Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, good morning or good afternoon, whatever time it is that you're watching this Hello Self podcast. I want to welcome you. And I know that you're going to have a great experience today. I have a guest that is going to give you so many insights. And later on, I'm going to tell you why I really invited her on this podcast episode Um, And I think it's going to benefit you, too, not only in her own journey, but some of the things that she does. I am Patricia Leonard, and I am your host. So I want to welcome my guest right now. Arlia Hoffman is here with me today, and she's going to be sharing about some of her Hello Self moments. And hopefully her story will give you some insights into your own life and your own next steps in life. So welcome, Arlia. Hi, Patricia. So glad Glad to have you here. I I am thrilled to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Well, you're sure welcome. Well, later on, I'm going to give them some ideas about why I've got you on here because I, um, well, you know what? I think I'll just do this right now. Um, I want to give you an overview of Arlia first And then I'm going to share with you one of the several reasons that I invited her today. And um, I think that you're going to get a lot of benefit from it, too. And hopefully Arlia will, too. So just a little overview of um, her journey on uh, these roads that we like to talk about, we call life. Sometimes we expect them to be highways that Just everything goes the way we planned, the way we laid it out. But that's not always true. And if you're sitting there wanting to do something with your life, you've got some dreams or goals that you've put on that someday shelf because you thought, oh, I don't know how to do that or I'm too old or the time has passed. We're here to help you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And Arlia will show you how to do some of that. Um, as she shares her story. Well, I'd like to tell you just a little about her. She is the founder of Women's Agent, the Women's Agency. She's a podcast host. And guess how I met her? (laughs) (laughs) She is helping me with my podcast, Hello Self. And that's the reason, a key reason I wanted to have her on here, because if you're thinking about writing a book, having a podcast. She is a fabulous coach. And let me tell tell you, I wrote a book, Hello Self, in July and published it. And now she's bringing it to life. You know, they go on that someday shelf. You hope somebody buys one. Well, Arlia has shown me how to take Hello Self and make it a living book. And not only that, a path for others to get to their dreams and goals and say hello to themselves, who they really are. So she's a podcast coach and producer and an advocate for women in podcasting. Naturally, the Women's Agency gives you a clue there. After leaving the corporate world, and I guess many of us have done that, She had a spiritual awakening, and that's one of the things I really want her to share is what was that spiritual awakening, and what did it cause her to do, and I call that a hello self moment. So, Arlia, could you start right there with your story about, you said you had this spiritual awakening, and Maybe just help our audience understand a little bit about that hello self moment for you and what it where it took you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, I was 37 living the perfect life. Two kids, a newly renovated house in a lovely little neighborhood and a loving, devoted husband. And I was miserable, not because of any of the, you know, any of the pieces of my life. It's just that I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't 
I was trying. I thought I was trying, but I was also putting myself in a box that others had told me mm-hmm. was the right box. And um, so I was doing my best to be happy, but but not, and still desperately seeking something to make me happy. And what I didn't realize at the time is some big, when we have big things that happen in life, they shake us up mm-hmm. and um, they may not even be our our events, but if they impact us, they they can change our whole paradigm. So true. My my parents divorced after 49 years of marriage. So completely changed my whole paradigm. And I didn't realize that 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 my own process was catalyzed by that event. Mm-hmm. And I began looking at my life and realizing that it was not it, it wasn't me. It was beautiful and I, it, there was a lot of love in my life, but I wasn't living my life. Mm-hmm. So I, it, it, it was just a, it was a conversation with someone else that just woke me up to the fact that I was living in the lie that this was the way I had to be. Mm-hmm. And, and there were no other options. Um, and one, once I realized that there was a whole wide world of options available to me to feed my own soul and be me, um, I was called like a runaway freight train. Um, so it, it broke me open into, uh, finding out, trying to find out who I was. Mm -hmm. I had been raised, um, in one very, you know, strict tradition. And I said, "I, I have to throw all this away because I don't know what's actually mine. So I threw away all my, my religious teachings, all my beliefs. And I said, okay, I'm starting over. What do I have? You know, I, I have, I have this belief and I have a belief in a, in a, a universal creator that loves me. And I started over and I started looking, I found Neil Donald Walsh. I found Eckhart Tolle. I found Clarissa Pinkola Estes. I started just immersing myself in it and began experiencing life. It, it did lead to, uh, my divorce, which, you know, can be very challenging. Some people can, um, well, one of my other, uh, spiritual, um, mentors, super monk kid, um, she was one of the people I turned to and she experienced a spiritual awakening in the context of her marriage and, and her marriage survived and mine didn't, but it gave me the freedom and the space to figure out who I was and figure out what I wanted to do. Um, so I stayed, I, I had been in the corporate world. I was in banking and I stayed there for another five or six years, but began exploring my creative side. Mm-hmm. I became a photographer. I went into social media, website design, all of all of these creative endeavors and thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and after a while, you know, when, th- when I th- kind of stabilized, figured out sort of who I was, had a working definition, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I went back to school. I, and it was another hello self moment. I had a partner at the time. I had a friend who had been to California and she returned and I was saying, gosh, I just, I just love California. I would love to go to California. He's like, well, let's do it. And he's like, what would you do if you were, if you were to go to California? I was like, well, I'd, I'd go to grad school and I'd go to this school that I had one school in mind. I had one degree in mind. Like it, it would just was rising up out of my soul. Mm-hmm. And all I needed was that permission to say, well, why not? If you could do this, what would you do? And I would call that my second hello self moment where somebody said, why not? So I went and visited. We had a great, a great uh, vacation. I came back and I applied to that graduate school and got in. And it was, it was, it was a terrifying thing to do at 43. Was I 40? I was 43, (laughs) but I was exhilarated too, because I had finally found what was true for me. Um, I, I knew that the, the spiritual awakening that I had been through and, and my divorce was a whole process that a lot of women go through, but they don't have the support and the 
and the guidance to navigate it. Mm -hmm. There's so little said about a woman's midlife. And for me at 37, that was a bit early. Some women go through it earlier than that. Some women go through it in their fifties and sixties. And despite all of, all of the resources we have at our fingertips and coaches and spiritual guides, I see very little about that midlife process, uh, process. So I really felt a deep call to help women and support women through the same kind of process I'd been through. So I went to, went to grad school and got a degree in Jungian and archetypal studies, which means it's the psychology of the soul yeah. of the inner yeah. life of the unconscious of the things that are going on behind the eyes. And it was so perfectly aligned with all the spiritual work I'd done. I had studied um, indigenous wisdom and uh, mysticism and um, archetypal psychology, all of these things. <laughs> and so it really helped focus where my personal journey had taken me. And so when I, when I graduated, I went immediately into coaching women and uh, leadership development and thoroughly loved all of that. And uh, as, as things do, when the pandemic arrived, um, I was in the midst of the women's sanctuary, my first organization of uh, having um, in-person sacred circles for women, coaching women, helping them really understand their inner life as, as I had found, um, building connection and community and really sinking into that. It was, it was a beautiful time. And mm -hmm. then when things were no longer in person, that's when I went into podcasting and I haven't looked back. It's become what I've discovered is it's become the next spiritual practice for me of mm -hmm. connecting with people, coaching and supporting people, particularly women in this amazing medium of podcasting. Think about, I, I, I love that story. It is so, and I know that's a story that a lot of people uh, listening today have experienced at some level. Mm -hmm. Now they don't, not everybody calls it a spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. I had a client last week and she works, she's a CPA and she works in corporate America. And she said, I simply ask myself one day, are you happy? Mm -hmm. And so it happens, the, the journey to a, a hello self or awareness can happen in a lot of ways. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a waking up or Absolutely. if you will, and it doesn't have to be in midlife as Arlia was saying, it can happen in a time. This, this was a young lady that I was uh, coaching last week. So, you know, I, I think for me, when I went through that spiritual awakening, one of the things, and, and I'm not sure I called it that, mm -hmm. but what happened is you you told you said I loved the medium uh, media I loved the psychology of things so you've wrapped all those things into your future now into your career now and I love that and sometimes I think that when we're when we're discovering who we are at this mm -hmm. point in our life because they're we're always in the process of discovery. But I think when we're discovering what we look back now and say, oh, well, that was just adding to another piece of who I am. And that was, so we're really building a foundation as we begin to explore. And I'm saying that a hello self moment, and I think you just confirmed it, that a hello self moment is simply it can be a lot of things. It can be a spiritual kind of thing. But what it is, and this is what I am trying to clarify, and I think I talked about this a little in the book, that it's really um, another part, not just our mental part, but another part of us wanting expression. Mm -hmm. And usually that is the more creative side. And we, in our society, Everything is taught us through language, words, mm -hmm. and much more about this is the way you're supposed to be. And it doesn't really hit on the psychology or the spiritual aspect or the who I really am aspect. So the journey 
is not only finding our career <laughs> or something we love to do, but it is a changing of who we are in a lot of cases. Would you agree with that, um, Arlea? Absolutely. I mean, we're it's it is it is about getting beyond the 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 superficial life into those deeper layers and being able to recognize who we are and listen to ourselves. Oh, that's listen to point. listen to the things that come up like, oh, this is what really makes me happy. This is what I really want to be doing. There's something more here. You know, that nagging sense that there's something more means there there's something more to find. Yes, yes. And so, yeah, that, that le my latest hello self moment was in the, um, you, you said about, you know, bringing together those pieces of my life. I was doing this coaching and then I just immersed myself in the podcast production for a couple of years, you know, learning and, and growing with it. And it felt like there were two different kinds, two different sides of me. There was this, this helping side and this expertise, this technical expertise that I was building mm -hmm. and they seemed incompatible. And that was the moment for me a couple of months ago, it was the same kind of question of like, it feels that these are like, these are incompatible. What else is possible? What if that's not true? Yes. And the moment I opened up to that question of what if something else is possible? it hit me, it hit me like a ton of bricks that it's possible to merge these two, to be in service to women through this medium that is um, burgeoning and, and so powerful. And, you know, Arlia, I think that's something that our society does to not only women, but to men, just in general, to human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll ask you sometimes, do you have any experience in this? Why would you want to go in social media? You don't have any experience in that. What? So they're always looking at um, the external or the the pieces that seem to make sense when that's not what happens in real life a lot of the time. It's just like you're talking, taking these two separate looking pieces of technology and psychology mm -hmm. and finding that they are perfect for podcasting. I mean, those are some of the things you've helped me as we've gone through the podcast development, you have helped me discover sides of myself. And I knew from the beginning, I did not have technology background, but I like to write. I like to discover who people are. That's my whole goal is to help you, the audience, turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And I, I'm like you, I use a lot of different mediums in doing that. Um, so it's very interesting because this weekend, uh, yes, this weekend, I'm on the board of women in film and television, and we're having a mixer. And it happens to be a Halloween party. <clears throat> so because I do, um, uh, I'm not sure how, how to say the, okay, I'm going to be a fortune teller in that because I am very intuitive but it's going to be for fun. But, you know, I bet my goal is that a lot of people will say, oh, my gosh, that's something I've always wanted. Not not the fortune telling, but I've always wanted to do something like that, because I think if we allow <clears throat> ourselves to step into the wholeness of who we are as human beings, not as a woman, not as a man, as a human being with a mind and a heart and a soul. I think that if we just, you said, listen. And I think mm -hmm. if we just don't think we've got the answer and we listen to what the person may come up and say, oh, I'd like to know this. I think what happens a lot of times in those gaps, in those um, from playing it out in our head and hearing it in our spirit, I think those gaps are where the true answer is a lot of times for the next part of our life. So um, I really like what you're saying because I think this is the kind of thing that um, that we're do in our society we're really about. Do you see the 
generation that we're in right now or the transition that we're in in general, what do you see about that as far as the kind of work you're doing, the awakening, the hello self kind of things? Where do you see that going and what's happening in your uh, estimation? Well, I think we're going to continue on this trajectory of of beginning to value more and more mm -hmm. community and generosity and togetherness and the honoring of all life like all the all the things that have come out in the last couple of years about um the importance of of our family chosen and otherwise and nurturing those connections and being being grounded in community and then in in the business world nurturing connections and community and it's okay. not about it's not always about the bottom line. It is about the people. And so that's why I love the podcasting medium because it is all about the people mm -hmm. and it, it is all about the connections in the community and lifting each other up as in, in these relationships yes. and in these conversations. Yes. Um, it's so suited to relationship because it is all about the connection and the conversation and discovering things together. There's always magic that happens when two people start talking about a topic. And um, that's what, that's what excites me about it. And in general, yeah, that's, that's where we're headed. And that's what excites me is that sense of community and connection. Um, when I was in leadership development, it sometimes felt like I was Sisyphus, you know, pushing the rock up the hill because we were teaching awareness and listening skills and relating to people and people could understand the ideas, but they weren't always willing to implement them. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's probably shifting significantly mm -hmm. now. I hope it is from mm -hmm. what I'm seeing is people are understand now how important that is, how that's more important than anything else. So I hope that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And I do think, you know, Hannah, uh, as you were telling that story, I'm a storyteller anyway, but um, I was at Home Depot this week getting some paint or stain for my patio. And it was, uh, what I had was an old, um, the mixture, they hadn't had put color in it. The person who sold it to me had only fixed one gallon with color and they had not put color in this. So I went back and I met this uh, man and it had been two years old. And he said, oh, my goodness, uh, we don't even sell this product anymore. And uh, the color code on the top of the one you brought has changed. But uh, and this is going to show you exactly what's happening in our society that uh, that uh, Arlia was speaking about. So he said, I'm going to try to help you, ma'am. And he was a very nice uh associate at Home Depot. But anyway, he got the color and he said, do you think that's pretty close? And I said, I think you got it. That's fine. And it's a patio. Who's going to get down and look at them? <laughs> so anyway, when I was leaving, I said, just what you were talking about, Arlia, is what's going on in corporate America. And I thought, you know, who knows that that man took that time and it, they don't even sell it anymore. But he took that time with me. So mm -hmm. as I was walking out, I said, is the manager here? And she, the young lady said, no, but the assistant manager is. And she went back to check. She said, oh, he's gone to lunch. So um, I said, oh, well, can I have his number? She said, I'll tell you what, here's a sticky note. Write down who you want to honor and your phone number and my name. And I did. And would you believe, so this confirms what you're saying, Arlia, would you believe at about, that was about 4.30 at about seven o'clock that evening, I got a call. I didn't answer it because I didn't recognize the number, mm -hmm. but he left a message. It was the assistant manager. And he said, thank you so much. These are the things we need in corporate America those moments. So when to my audience, when you get a nudge to do something, whether it's for yourself or someone else, 
follow through at least to the listening because mm -hmm. just like Arlea was saying, it's changing not only you, but our society in general. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right on things are and sad that we had to have the pandemic um, to do that. But uh, out of disruptions come good things sometimes, just like Absolutely. you were telling in your life. Yeah, that's one of the themes that I I, I teach about a lot is that the um, there's always something new that's coming out of things that fall apart or die. That's that's the ground in which something new can be born. And yes. um, I love that story. It's um, it, it's so important to listen, to listen to what's happening inside of you, to listen to that voice, to that nudge, to say, say something nice about this you know, employee that helped you. I mean, that's, that's the type of generosity that I, I see on the rise and I hope will continue. Oh, me too. Yes. And I do believe that even, uh, I know that was just a, a small business right there, which is part of a larger business. However, I do see that um, when we had to not stand over people and supervise them all the time during the pandemic, I do see that a lot of people are working from home now. And that's causing a lot of businesses to um, start up because people are finding, I like this. So they're beginning to get um, a, cl a little clarity about Hey, I like this. Maybe I could have my own business or whatever. I uh, it's so great. So I love it. Yeah. yeah, I love it. It's 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 giving people the space to be creative. Y yes, and you know, I think it's funny because I did not. Arlie and I did not meet right away. I went to talk to somebody about being on my podcast. I asked her, would you be willing, I haven't started it yet, but I'm going to start a podcast. Would you be willing to be one of my guests? And she said, well, I just started one last month. And uh, so she gave me a name because I had been talking to someone else. So these are the crooked roads, I'm telling you. And you have to keep following your nudges, mm -hmm. uh, not only for your own uh, thing, but once you've said, this is what I want to do, Follow the nudges because it'll take you to people like Arlia or other coaches that can help you through these rough spots. So anyway, she gave me the name of a person that she was working with in Atlanta. And he had a business radio show, John Ray. And she said, why don't you talk to him? So I thought, Oh, that's not a podcast, but I'll, okay. So I followed through. And then after I talked with him and um, we he had a little bit more clarity about what I wanted to do, he said, well, I've got an idea of somebody that I know that can help you. So you see, it's not always you go across the street and there's your answer. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to follow the nudges and the leads uh, doesn't mean that they're always going to give you the perfect outcome, but you will discover. And so much of the time we give up almost before we're at the success point. So well, I, I want to, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to follow up on that because okay, great. When, when I was early 2020, I was doing the women's sanctuary and um, a month before we all had to go back to home, back back to our houses. Yes. I started working in podcasting with John Ray a month and three weeks. And then suddenly everything was virtual. Well, it's podcasting. We can, we can roll with that. You know, I immersed myself in this new position and this new technology, having no idea where it was going to take me. And Eventually I started a podcast for the women's sanctuary and that was a revelation of how connection through this medium is so effective and powerful. And then forwarding, you know, two and a half years later to now, I had no idea that the, that those two worlds would merge for me, that spiritual direction, those spiritual groups and this technology. And so at the time, you know, it was just, <laughs> let's go learn something new and make some money. And, and 
here we are two and a half years later with just the the energy of that first organization is perfectly suited to what I'm doing now. I had no idea it would evolve mm -hmm. into this. And I think that's, you're absolutely right. You have to be able to follow the nudges and trust them mm -hmm. because yeah, I like knew it was the right thing to do at the time. But again, I had no idea that in two and a half years, those two pieces of, of my world would merge into what feels like now the perfect path forward for me. And, and I want to say, oh boy, this is really leading into some great, I really like that because, and I want to say this to the audience and to you, I, I had this feeling after I wrote the book that I wanted to start a podcast. Now I have to be honest with you. I told you about the journey to Arlia and to John uh, Ray and to some, uh, to the point we are today that I'm interviewing a guest that hopefully their stories are really helping guide you in the direction you want to go. But one thing that I have to share is I am moving forward on faith or trust that the podcast is where I want to go and what will help me make the living I need, and also touch the base that I want to touch. So I have to tell you that I do not have all clarity right now. So I want you to know to my audience that as you move along, it may take some trust, mm. but just like Arlie has been saying, that what you can find is there are no wrong roads. They're all leading, even if it stops at one point and turns to the right or turns to the left, everything that you have brought with you at that point uh, fits with where you're going. Mm -hmm. So I am moving forward on this podcast with faith and trust, knowing that that's how my road has been my whole life. I've had to pay attention, just like Arlea was saying, to the nudges and to the a trust within myself that mm -hmm. there are some days I said, Oh, why did I get in this? This is so much work. <laughs> and then I get to interview people and get to know them. And I find, Oh my goodness, their journey's different, but it's cost some of the same streets that I mm -hmm. have crossed. And, right. um, and it makes me feel like keep going. We don't always know where we're going, and I don't care what anybody says to you. Okay, what are you going to do when you go to college? It doesn't really matter. Get something and move forward. Don't mm -hmm. sit still and don't get stuck in that. Or what are you going to do? Okay, my brother said, what are you going to do with another book, Patricia? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to create a podcast. So we don't want to listen to those kind of things. We want to listen and Arlie has said this several times, we want to listen to ourselves and the nudges. Because once we lose that, what we've started dealing with is the external and not paying attention to ourselves. So um, now she had, Arlie has said that she had one phase of business when she met John. Now, what are her key goals for the women's agency? What are some of the key things that, took you in a in that direction clearly until you find another nudge. But anyway, what are some of your aspirations in creating that step in your um, journey? Well, just like the women's, just like the name, the women's agency, I, I so firmly believe in the power of women's voices mm -hmm. and whatever work they're wanting to do in the world. I'm really passionate about getting women behind a microphone. So the women's agency is, is a full service production and coaching agency to help women who want, who have something to say, who have significant work to do in the world. And I don't know any woman who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> to, to get, right. to, to have the support they need to just make it happen. You know, a lot of women not a lot of women. Some of the women I meet are overwhelmed by the technology. Um, they're overwhelmed by the process, or they may not have the confidence of their message yet. And um, 
none of that should stand in their way. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if it's the technology they need or the, you know, whatever they need, it, my job is to help find that and support them in whatever uh, work they want to do in the world. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it's about not just supporting them, but connecting with them, helping them connect with their guests. And what I found in the process of being my own podcast host is that I, I received such a gift mm. from, from helping others put their message out in the world. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's so, it's so reciprocal, you know, I'm helping them and I, I have, it just, it feels so good. I just want to keep helping more women. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it, it is about, um, yeah, it's, it's supporting them, collaborating with them, building this community of women who are all doing that good work in the world. Mm-hmm. I like the thing that you started out with there about women's voices, getting mm-hmm. women's voices out there, because I think sometimes that is exactly what uh, people sit back and not. And it's not that we don't have anything to say. We don't value what we have to say and somebody like you giving value to the voices, giving value to the voices and to the things that make their hearts sing. I always say, if we can find something that makes our hearts sing and we dance around a little Mm -hmm. um, as women, we um, we're going to make a bigger impact because often this is something that I, I don't know if I got stole it from somebody, but authenticity is the best gift we can give ourselves. Mm, And authenticity is the best gift we can give the world because once we find our voice and who we are, and that's what you're saying, you help them get clarity on what that is Mm -hmm. and trust then they're making a ripple effect. Uh, they're impacting the people around them, the people Absolutely. even beyond that. So th- that's really exciting from the standpoint of the women's agency. Um, and uh, let me see, I wanted to combine it. Yeah, you said in there that you were combining your podcasting and your social media. And I think that's funny, because not funny, like ha ha, but interesting because that's where you, when you went to California, that was exactly where you planted another seed in that media. And some people might say psychology, Mm -hmm. but then it was a piece of what the podcasting turned out to be and your women's agency. Mm -hmm. So how did you, when you started to feel these Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. How did you move through how you had identified yourself before? How? What were some of the things that you did to help you move through um, trusting? Yes, this is what I am going to do. Because um, going from where you were into psychology major. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a journey. Um it was all that personal work. It was, I, I remembered the pain of not being Mm -hmm. myself, just this, this heart wrenching loneliness. I knew what it felt like to not be true to myself. Mm -hmm. And once I got a taste of the, of the, of the, the peace and the joy of what it is to, to not follow somebody else's dream, but to listen to myself and keep taking that next step, Mm -hmm. listening to myself. I just, I just kept practicing it. It became a, I I would use these words now. I wouldn't have used those words then, but it became a, a discipline. I was devoted to the, to that inner voice. It became um, a devotion to the next right step. Mm -hmm. And they weren't always the right step. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, they weren't always smooth and easy no sometimes I listened to myself and it was I I don't say regret but I wish I had done it differently but it's all a learning experience Mm -hmm. and I I definitely also needed the support of the people around me who loved me and cared about Mm me you know after my divorce I had to build a new community but those people supported me they encouraged me and just like my partner at this time time said why not why not Mm 
Yes. And That's we a all need question. We all need those people in our lives if it's if it's our own inner voice or or the the people around us. So it was it was also the personal work I did of really learning who mm -hmm. I was and what was important to me and learning how to tell the difference between what's going on up here in my head and what's really going on in my my higher self. Okay, this really leads me to a question <laughs> that I've had that from so many people, and then we'll start to wind down. But um, you said I started listening to myself, <clears throat> and I I hear a lot of people say that. Me too. Mm -hmm. However, I have a lot of people that say, "How do you know it's not a message you're telling yourself, and it's your real self? How do you know the difference?" that it's just not, you're just falling for something else because you don't know what to do. So mm -hmm. some, some of them have said to me, I don't hear anything. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't know anything. How do you know it's not a wish or a hope or it's a real thing to pay it? How do you know that Arlia? I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> The first thing I'd say is you don't know. You don't know until you yes. until you act on something. Yes. You just don't know. Um, it it could be your head. It could. But I heard somebody say the other day. I wish I could remember who, but they said you, you know there are the ideas that come to you and go. I could do that. I could do that. Yes, I could do that. But then the, but then if it's a if it's truly from your inner self, it's like it's the excitement. You pay attention to your emotions. It's the excitement of I could do that, and. And I feel compelled to do that. Um, so it is, it is paying attention to your body and your emotions, and and then you have to take a leap of faith. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. I didn't always know how to listen to myself. Sometimes I still don't. Mm -hmm. But it takes practice to to feel and know the difference between an idea just passing through your head or one that is really being sourced from inside you. Mm -hmm. And it's. And you know what? Another thing I play a game with myself as okay. one way. Yeah. So one way is um, if I get an idea and I'm thinking, I want to do that. And somebody comes up to me and says, Patricia, you haven't written a book for a while. When are you going <laughs> to come out with another yep. book? And I'm thinking, I can't believe you're saying that. I was just thinking about, about writing a book and I've been asking, what is the name of the book? What am I? So um, I said, because sometimes these things come to us, but if there's follow-up things, you may see mm -hmm. a sign. You may be driving down the road and you see a sign and you think, oh my gosh, that's another clue. Now Absolutely. we still don't know, like Arlia said, we still don't know that that's an answer. But if you start, this is the game I play with myself. If I start getting several of those aha moments or somebody saying something to me, I'll tell you another secret I have. <laughs> and I know you're probably really going to think I'm crazy now. But okay, I play this game with um, my my spirit, my God. And um so I say, okay, show me a penny. If mm. if let me find a penny on the ground, and uh, and I'm not looking for it. You just uh, sprinkle. So some days I'll go out and I'm thinking, well, I guess you're not here today. Where are you? <laughs> and because I didn't, but I don't expect it every day. But a lot of times when I've got questions in my head, I will say, okay, I just need a penny as a sign. And this past week, <laughs> we can follow to see if this works. I was going into Planet Fitness and I found a dime. It was it just it's so dirty. Who would ever see it? And I mm -hmm. bent over to pick it up and I went, oh, that's a dime. And then I was going to Kroger to get my groceries after that. And I got out of the car and right beside my car door, was another dime. And I said, wow. okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so play a game with yourself so you don't get too serious about all this stuff. I love what you're saying because it 
it it is it's about it is about not being too serious with yourself yes. because that's when your brain traps you into one particular yes. thing but you ask the questions and then you just let go yes good point point. and then you pay attention and you listen in my book, I talk about that. The ego will step in because they love to be seen. So they'll yep. step in and put doubt in your head. Yes. So I have this analogy. The ego likes to keep us in the broom closet where it's small and dark and safe because that's safe. We know what's in there. It's small. We can control that. Yes. But you know, the moment you can open yourself to other options, what else is available? Open the door, step out of the broom closet, and you're in a castle of an, a, a myriad of options and your ego is not going to be really afraid of that, but it, it, it is. And that's part of what my personal work was, is, is getting outside right. of that, that small box, that broom closet and going, Oh, there's a lot more available. How can I explore and ask the questions and be open and see what else happens. And um I think yeah, that's it's kind of like sense. Maya Angelou, you know, in her, I, I can't, I don't know if I'll quote it just right, but the caged bird sings Yes. At, mm -hmm, yes. and doesn't even know that the cage, all it has to do is just go out. And just like Arleo was saying, all we have to do is walk out of that closet and there's a myriad of options out there. Oh my gosh. I hope that all of you the audience out there has had as much fun as I have listening to Arlia's story and her thoughts about how we really connect with who we are and our voices and not afraid to speak them. So Arlia, one last question. Um, what are some of the things that you have planned next? Oh, the women's agency will be continuing to build um, a community and, you know, if it, anyone's thinking of starting a podcast, please reach out to me. I'd love to support them. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to continue. Are you going to do any workshops or anything like that or that you know of? Um, not at this yeah. time. There will be, okay. there will be some, um, there will be some groups online that women can join to learn ah. more about podcasting and um, and how to start your podcast and connect with other women. So just stay tuned. You can um, follow me Fabulous. on link. Yeah, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Arlia Hoffman on LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, there will be much more information coming. Soon. I want to be on that podcast one too, so I can learn more. Absolutely. You're <laughs> in. Oh my gosh. You're well, in. I am so grateful for all your insight. And I know our audience is. And Arlia has given you some great, um, hopefully, inspiration that you, you just go for it. You just mm -hmm. step out there and you talk to somebody that believes in you and trust mm -hmm. that you're going in the right direction. Because my my bet is you probably are. But don't give up because life is a journey. And some days it'll seem like you're at the at a stop sign, it says, where from here? I don't know where to go. Well, just keep going because the next stop sign will be the road to success is right here. So just keep going. Thank you, Arlia, for so much um, insight. And thank you to my listeners. Just remember to subscribe. And again, I am Patricia Leonard. And you can learn more about me on www.patricialeonard.net. Thank you again for being here. And hopefully I'll see you at the next episode. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.